Around the World. That's that solo. Kurt Winter solo. And I probably heard it on the radio, but the, the first time I really had access to the song was when I bought the 1971 album, The Best of the Guess Who. Now that album, The Best of the Guess Who, the whole first side, These Eyes, Laughing, Undone, No Time, American Woman, No Sugar Tonight, those are all credited to Randy Bachman and Burton Cummings. And in 71, after, or maybe 70, when American Woman hit number one, Bachman got sick, and I think it was a gallbladder deal, and he got ill, and he had a wife and kids, and he didn't want to tour, so he quit the band. In steps Kurt Winter. And the whole second side of that first Best of the Guess Who album that starts off with Hand Me Down World, that was written by Kurt Winter. Bus Rider, Winter, Share the Land, that was Cummings, but that was Kurt Winter's guitar playing with Donnie McDougal. Do You Miss Me Darling, Cummings and Winter, and Hang On to Your Life, Cummings and Winter. <laughs> And Kurt Winter was Burton Cummings' favorite writing partner, became to be his favorite writing partner. And they wrote some great, great stuff. But, you know, back in those days, you learned solos on guitar by learning to sing them, just like the... You learn to sing that, and and that was how you pick the solos out, and that's how I did it. Plus, dropping that needle on the vinyl and destroying your records and your record stylist, you know, messing them all up. But Kurt had a, a big influence on me, probably more than Randy, because he was with the band longer, and uh, uh, stuff like just that in that solo that. There's a couple things right there that I learned. I learned that trill, that, that tremolo. From listening to the Guess Who. And he was the master of the pentatonic scale, so he's in B on that one. And he gets that... It, it, you're playing... So you hit... You know, you're, you're going between B and E. It's, so, you know, another riff that I got out of it was that. Bending up to the B. To the D, back to the B. And that, in the first position pentatonic, the... Now that note never gets played because that's some guys going la, 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 la. good thing about Kurt, his solos were never too, too long, you know? They were never really, really super long solos, a lot of them. He, he played, you know, eight bars and out. Sixteen bars, maybe, and out. 
So those those songs, those were a big, big influence on me, you know. And of course, Randy had a... Uh, That was Randy's, one of one of Randy's songs. But great, great stuff, you know. And then when Kurt Kurt Winter was Burton's writing partner until he died. And then I think the next person to step in was Dominic Troiano. And Dominic had some great stuff too. Uh, I'll have to go back and check the Road Food album and see if Kurt was still alive on Road Food. I I should know this, but I can't remember because it, it's I haven't paid attention and read those album covers in so so long ah i do remember it was kurt winter and donnie mcdougall on road food because kurt winter does all that beautiful slide work on star baby so and his solo in road food is one of my favorite guitar solos ever i'll have to rework that one up that's kind of a tricky solo and the other thing about kurt was he had no problem playing the stuff that randy wrote on the guitar and leaving it intact when they went out and performed live, he kept those solos like American Woman and that stuff. He he kept them true to what Randy had originally done. He didn't change them and try to spin them his own way because, you know, I, I maybe that's just the kind of guy he was. He was kind of a purist maybe and he believed that, that to leave that intact and not try to change it too much. Now, obviously, he played a little bit different style than Randy or had a little bit different feel and a little bit different tone to him, but Kurt was a great guitar player, and he always played the same Cherry Red ES-335 or Vintage Cherry, whatever, 335, Gibson 335. He always wore a cutoff sleeved sweatshirt or a hockey shirt. He was a heavy set guy. But he was a good singer. You know, you'd see Burton would be in a white suit or some crazy suit sitting at the piano. And the other guys would be kind of dressed up kind of, you know, in the in the 70s bell bottoms and stuff. And there's Kurt in a cutoff sweatshirt and bushy hair. And, you know, he's playing that ES-335 and he played it real high. He held the guitar real high. That was his style. But... He was just a great, great, great guitar player. And he was one of my favorites. And one of my biggest influences, guess who was one of my biggest influences on guitar? So you should go check some of that stuff out. You should go listen to it. Uh, especially the, the best of the Guess Who album is a really great album because it's got all of the first hits in there. Every one of them was a huge hit. And then Best of the Guess Who Volume 2 is almost just as good. So, you know, there's two records right there. But they, they had tons of records. They, the Guess Who had tons of records. And I, I think one of my favorite records was Rockin'. That was, that was a great record. And that was Donnie, McDougal, and Kurt on that record. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost certain that was Donnie and Kurt. Randy had left. Randy was long gone. And then, you know, later on, as everybody knows, Randy went and formed uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. And they went on to have all kinds of success with Randy's writing. You know, Randy wrote jazzier chords than Kurt did. Kurt stuck to a lot of majors and minors and stuff where Randy would throw in major sevenths and minor sevenths and do a lot of different things. Randy had a jazzier feel to his playing than Kurt. Kurt was more straightforward rock and roll. But he fit with Burton Cummings perfectly. Because, you know, Burton Cummings, he even says a lot of times that he grabbed a lot of his piano licks from the guitar. One of Burton's big licks was just a guitar lick that he stole for the piano. The like Albert Flasher, you know. You could play that stuff on the guitar. You could easily play his piano licks on the guitar. And that was what, for me, was a cool thing about the Guess Who. You know, you can cover the Guess Who a lot of times without having a piano. 
in the band. And then there were a few songs that there there was no piano. Burton played flute in Undone. He didn't use the piano. Uh, in No Time, he plays the guitar. There's no piano in that. I mean, obviously, there's a piano in most of the stuff, but it, it's easy enough to cover on the guitar. You can still get away with the songs. So, you know, if you get a chance, check out some old Guess Who stuff, especially... Uh, the stuff that came after Randy left because really they had a lot of their biggest success especially touring and playing live was after Randy Backman left and Kurt Winter uh, took over and joined the band and it, it's just it's, it, it's a great inspirational uh, guitar you know from the early 70s mid 70s rock and roll uh, AM pop radio you know that's what it was so that's it. Just you know, I've been up a lot of late nights lately, and I seem to gravitate back towards some of that old stuff, and especially the Guess Who. And I I knew that song, and and so I worked up that solo so I could play it for you, and wanted to talk about one of my favorite guitar players, who is you know not as well known as like Hendrix or Jimmy Page or uh, some of these other guys, you know. So, like I said, if you get a chance, check out some of the old Guess Who stuff. They were from Canada, right across the lake from me. So, right, that's it for now. I didn't want to make this too long. So, all right, out with the old and with the new. Until next time, hang in there, people.